Today, the federal Democratic Reform Minister, Pierre Polyev, introduced a bill called the Fair Elections Act. Today, if we're going to have proper oversight, Elections Canada cannot oversee itself. Independence is a basic feature of, of Governance 101, and we are instilling it by making the Commissioner of Canada Elections fully independent with a free hand. Music to my ears. Now, the details of this bill were announced at about 10 a.m. today. I'll show you some of the details later in the show. But the Liberal Party and its auxiliary wing in the media party were outraged about this bill last night and early this morning in advance of reading a single word of the proposed law. Now, I get that it's the job of opposition parties to oppose, but the shock and outrage and appall that greeted this bill in advance of it being released tells you something. It tells you that the most vigorous opponents of this conservative government know that Election Canada, as it now stands without these reforms, isn't neutral. It's not a referee. It's a player on one of the teams, to be precise. It's a player on the Liberal team. That's why Gerald Butts, Justin Trudeau's senior handler, his nanny, strategist, speechwriter, went to DEFCON 1. Here's a couple of his tweets before the bill was even released or mentioned. He says, I will give the Conservative Party this. They really are shameless. They're daring Canadians to care and betting the farm that we won't. Fair Elections Act. And he wrote, hope people take heart from the Tel Vic everything experience. Conservatives will back down if the pressure gets high enough. Fair Elections Act. So he's going to the mattresses. He's going to a political war over a bill that had not even been released yet, but he knew. He knew that his favorite ally, the partisan Elections Canada staff, were about to have their biased wings clipped. Or, or this guy, Emmett McFarlane, he casts himself as a professor, and he writes for McLean's in the Globe and Mail. But he revealed last month that he actually gives private political strategy advice to Justin Trudeau. Like I say, the auxiliary wing of the Liberal Party in the media. Here's what he said, I'm quoting his tweet. Is the chief electoral officer seriously going to learn about the new law affecting his office by watching TV like everyone else? He was outraged that a cabinet minister would announce a bill to change the role of elections Canada bureaucrats, that the bureaucrats themselves wouldn't get a sneak preview of the changes? Huh? I mean, again, who could possibly object to this other than folks who know that Elections Canada is already weirdly biased and political right now and that any changes will defang them. And no one was angrier about this bill, again, last night, before it was even released, than Trudeau Facebook friend Paul Wells, pictured here just goofing around with his buddy. Wells must have written a dozen rage-filled tweets about this last night, mad that he himself, Paul Wells, didn't get a private briefing before the minister announced the bill, or even a public briefing. So not just mad that the Elections Canada staff didn't get a sneak preview, Paul Wells was mad that Paul Wells didn't because, you know, he's a special person. And he says, and if you think I made a stink about it tonight, imagine the rest of the week. Love, Inkless, that's his online nickname. Look, let's cut the pretending. These guys were mad because the gong show, the partisan circus, the media circus that has brought Elections Canada into disrepute these past years is now going to come to an end. That's why they're mad. Uh, here's what I mean. Literally hundreds of media party stories have been written, hundreds, I have counted them, about conservative transgressions in elections, real or imagined. I mean, the big one is about robocalls, those mysterious phone calls that allegedly tipped the balance of the last election and let Harper steal the election by telling people to go to vote somewhere fake, like maybe in a cemetery at the dead of night or something. Of course, in an internal audit by Elections Canada, they revealed that there was no evidence that any election, any vote, and any riding anywhere was tipped by any irregularities. Here's a part of that audit. We've shown it to you on this show before. In fact, not a single person has even come forward to say that one person, not one person has said they were misled by these alleged robocalls. Not a single person has been convicted of making them. Well, actually, that's not true. A liberal MP named Frank Valeriot was convicted by the CRTC of illegal robocalls for making anonymous calls not properly identifying his campaign. But I bet you didn't know that because there haven't been a hundred stories about liberal law breaking and because it was the CRTC, not Elections Canada, that convicted him. And that's my point. Why didn't Elections Canada charge Frank Valeriot or convict him of something? Why did it have to be the phone regulator, not the elections regulator, to go after a liberal? 
why have the elections can the bureaucrats ignored him but conducted a long-running campaign of leaking and smearing against the conservatives? Why has Elections Canada launched investigations and lawsuits only against conservatives? In 2012, for example, the NDP was caught taking $344,000 in illegal donations from labor unions. Elections Canada didn't charge anyone. They just let the NDP give the money back sheepishly and pretend that they didn't do anything wrong. Why? Well, because that's the NDP. Imagine if the Conservatives took $344,000 in illegal donations from banks. Uh, Stefan Dion and other several uh, failed liberal leadership candidates, they couldn't raise enough money for their leadership cam uh, campaigns by the rules, so they borrowed huge sums of money from wealthy benefactors who surely knew they'd never been repaid. And indeed, they were not repaid. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of loans from extremely rich people to Stefan Dion and other liberals that were not repaid on time, if ever. The law was broken. But Elections Canada gave them extensions and then more extensions. And again, hang on, why no charges? They were breaking the law. Well, again, because they're liberals. This is what I mean. If a conservative doesn't have a receipt for a $1 soft drink bought on a campaign, there's a scandalous investigation with every lurid detail leaked to the press. But a third of a million bucks in illegal cash from unions to the NDP? Oh, no problem. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in illegal loan gifts from millionaires to a bunch of liberal stars? Oh, no problem. No wonder the Liberal Party and the media party were afraid of any changes to this system. They never had it so good as they have with this partisan takeover of Elections Canada. They knew that any reforms would end their having an embedded campaigner in the role of elections referee. I'm talking about Mark Mayrand, the bureaucrat who's supposed to run Elections Canada neutrally, but who hasn't. Not only is he a partisan, he's a showboat. He thinks he's a politician rather than a public servant bureaucrat. I mean, it's pretty simple in a democracy. The elected officials write the laws and the public service implements the laws. If some bureaucrat has a political idea of their own that contradicts the government, that's great. Quit and run for office? Huh, not Mayrand. He just won't shut up about what he'd do differently if he were the boss, a except he's not the boss, even though he likes to act like one. For example, he recently appointed, get this, a partisan advisory committee to give him advice. <laughs> we already have that. It's called Parliament, his boss. But he doesn't really like listening to Parliament, so he appointed former Liberal MP and Liberal leader, Bob Ray on his own private committee of advisors. Now, I like Bob Ray as socialists go, but he's extremely partisan. I follow him on Twitter for the entertainment value. He's always trashing Stephen Harper for something. This guy is on May Rand's advisory committee, a hyper-partisan liberal ndp -er. Oh, and Tory Senator Hugh Siegel. What the heck? Elections Canada's bureaucrats taking advice from Mark May Rand's own hand-picked partisan buddies instead of from Parliament, which writes our laws, what is going on? Now, of course, because Mayran prefers his own advice to that of the government. Uh, this is the kook who oversaw the new rule to let women vote wearing the full face obscuring the cab, the full ninja. I'm not talking about a, a scarf. I'm talking about a face mask, beekeeper style. Mark Mayrand thought that would help our democracy to let people vote with having to prove their ID by showing their face or letting people merely vouch for each other. No ID ne needed to vote because, you know, it's so hard to get ID in Canada. Driver's licenses, passports, health cards, anything. So just having some guy say, oh, yeah, yeah, I know him. Yeah, he's okay. That was good enough for Mark Mayrand. I'm not making this up. Mayrand wouldn't shut up about what he'd like to do if he was the boss, and all his ideas seemed to tilt towards making it easier for voter fraud, didn't they? Wear a mask, no problem. No ID, no problem. And the mother load of all, letting people vote online, like, I don't know, on Facebook, clicking like or whatever. Seriously, he just doesn't stop pitching online voting. Well, this is a picture of the headquarters of People's Liberation Army Unit, PLA Unit 61398 in Shanghai, China. They're the folks who have hacked the Pentagon. They have hacked Canadian companies like tech giants, like Nortel. They can hack anything. And Mark Mayrand, whose legacy is to make vote or fraud easier, wants to put voting online so 61398 Shanghai can go in and electronically stuff ballots. Gee, gee I wonder which team... 61398 Shanghai would vote for.
There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime. Yeah, let's put voting online. Good idea. Mark Mayran couldn't be more clear about his anti-conservative bias. And he couldn't be more clear about his policy focus. Well, today, Mayran and the media party were reminded that we elect our lawmakers in Canada. Let me quickly sum up Polyev's proposed reforms. Vouching for people, that is saying, sure, I know that guy, he's a citizen, that's over. If Mayran didn't have the common sense to end that, well, Parliament will. Elections enforcement will be taken away from Mayran and other political hacks, sorry, Bob Ray, and given to independent elections police, commissioners, enforcers of the law. This is probably the most important reform and the one Mayrand and the Liberals and the NDP will hate. Because if we had a separation between the bloviating bureaucrat at the top of Elections Canada and actual law enforcement, we probably would have had charges against the NDP and the Liberals for their gross admitted violations and probably would have had fewer costly witch hunts and fishing expeditions that yielded no convictions like their robocall smear against the Conservatives. Either way, it would be independent, not Mayrand political. Importantly, political parties will be able to get advanced rulings from Elections Canada on the legality of elections practices like accounting rules. Mayrand has deliberately used the vagueness of his laws to trap politicians in the past. This would force Elections Canada to say in writing in advance what's lawful and what's not. No more trapping conservatives or anyone else. Besides independent elections police, there will be mandatory registries for robocalls and jail terms for people doing impersonations. And one more change is that Elections Canada would be forced to do basic elections work, you know, telling Canadians when and where to vote. They'd have to add an extra day of advanced polls. Mayrand has had his daydream plans, his political committees, his online voting schemes, his burqa voting schemes. This is a gentle reminder from Parliament to do his bloody job. So let's sum up. Tougher laws against voter fraud. Independent police to do the Elections Act investigations. Tougher penalty for lawbreakers, but also the ability for parties to check the legality of campaign tactics in advance. And a slap upside the head to a wannabe king who forgets he's a civil servant, not a tax-paid prince. Yeah, I can see why the liberals hated this law even before they read it. And the scandal-mongering, conservative-hating media party hacks hated it too.